Good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. Uh, welcome, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sims. Here. Councilmember Battaglia. Here. Mayor LaBrosse. Here. This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at sec. Notice having been published according to law with a copy on file in the city clerk's office and a copy posted on the bulletin board in city hall. Thank you. Would everybody please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, very good. Okay, before we start our agenda tonight, we have a uh, special moment. We're going to swear in a new deputy fire chief in the city of Hackensack. So would Mr. Chris Annunziata please step forward? Raise your right hand and put your left hand on the Bible, and please repeat after me. I state your name. I, Chris Annunziata. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. Support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the governments. And to the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority. Under the authority. Of the people. Of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially and justly. And partially and justly. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. <clears throat> of the rank of deputy fire chief. Of the rank of deputy fire chief. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. We'll get a, a group picture in a moment, but uh, just real quickly, I, I first would like to congratulate Deputy Chief Annunziata on this promotion, much deserved promotion, I should say. Um, I know he worked really hard at it. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, the deputy became a member of the employment in the city of Hackensack in 1992 as an electrician. He was a city electrician for six years before uh, taking the test and becoming a firefighter in 1998 and quickly rose through the ranks. He um, actually uh, took over as a fire official, as a lieutenant. Um, it was one of those situations where we needed someone to step in as a fire official, and uh, 99, 98 guys stepped backwards, and Chris was left standing by himself. So, But he actually he, uh, he took on that challenge, I'll say, uh, as, a, as a young lieutenant, and you know, fairly not a whole ton of experience on the job. Um, and it's quite a, you know, a large responsibility, the fire official's position. Those of you that know uh, Deputy Nunziata know that he is very passionate about fire prevention. Um, and I have to say, you know, people don't realize, but the job that gets done in fire prevention is, is, has such a direct impact on the fire losses in the city of Hackensack and also on injuries and, and so forth to, to firefighters because the inspection programs that he puts into place and, and the inspections that he oversees and the inspectors he oversees, you know, they're the ones that are out in the streets and they're the ones that are keeping these buildings safe, keeping our people safe, keeping our firemen safe, you know, and relaying all that information back to us. So, unfortunately, out of the 99 member department, there's about 96 of us that people love to see us coming to their door. There's three inspectors that people don't necessarily love seeing when <laughs> he shows up at their door. They're not the happiest people in the world. but. All in all, I, I do want to congratulate you. I know you worked hard at this. You do a phenomenal job. Um, and I also, Mayor and Council, have to thank you for your continued support and city manager of our department 
and I know you're always looking out for us and the residents of the city of Hackensack, and I appreciate that. If uh, we could have other, any farm out here, we'll get a quick group picture. I, they all ran out on a call. We've been nonstop with broken water pipes, as you all know, for the past two days. So if we could get a, a group picture, that'd be great. Thank you. that, I will open up the meeting and turn it over to uh, the city manager for the agenda. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is the committee of the whole agenda for January 9th, 2018 at the new time at 6 p.m. Uh, second is we have a presentation from Barbara Davis from the Hackensack um, Flood Acquisition Plan. Barbara, we're here. Yes. We're ready to go. Get the lights. Okay. No. Oh, here's Andy. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Have a nice evening, everyone. Nice, thanks. Yep. Chris is taking everybody out to dinner, right? Justin, dinner's on Justin, everybody. I'll have those two by tomorrow afternoon. Gotcha. <clears throat> I think I already have one. You never heard back from those folks, huh? Good evening. I have this. We have this. My name is Barbara Heskins Davis. I'm Vice President of Programs at the Land Conservancy of New Jersey. I'm here tonight with Adam Strobel from Bergen County and Jeremiah Bergstrom from Rutgers Cooperative Extension. We're here tonight to talk to you about the flood acquisition plan that the city is putting together with the financial support of Bergen County. Um, Adam will introduce the Bergen County program. He'll then turn it over to me to talk about Hackensack's draft plan and what our preliminary recommendations are and then I'll turn it over to Jeremiah to talk about kind of the next steps with re in terms of restoration. We'll then open it up to the, the mayor and council for questions and um, if you so choose to the public. The purpose of the conversation tonight is really to introduce you to what's going on before the report is given to you in written format so we can get your feedback and any questions on what we're thinking. So without uh, further ado, I'm going to give you to Adam. Barbara, thank you very much. I work within the County of Bergen within a division of open space. One of my responsibilities is to manage the open space trust fund. Within the trust fund, we provide grant dollars to municipalities and not-for-profits for a number of activities, from <coughs> land acquisition, park development, historic preservation, um, farmland preservation. One of its newest elements is the floodplain protection program in which we work with municipalities 
trying to put a uh, plan of actions together to help municipalities identify project areas where there are known uh, repetitive fl uh, flooding areas within a municipality, looking to create a potentially, at the end of the day, parkland. So what we are putting together is a program in which we provide grant dollars to municipalities uh, to acquire homes and to provide guidance in, in uh, pr preserving open space and creating new open space. An element of this is to create a floodplain acquisition plan that will identify project areas that will help municipalities in the city to move forward in identifying project areas uh, to target and hopefully uh, be able to work with uh, homeowners uh, to uh, have them possibly um, sell their homes to the city and take them out of floods way. Barbara is uh, with the Land Conservancy of New Jersey. She's gonna walk through the floodplain acquisition planning document. Uh, we've met many a times uh, with uh, city staff, uh, through the administrator, a number of, of uh, representatives putting together this plan. Jeremiah Bergstrom is with Rutgers University and he will talk about um, once properties have been acquired and structures have been removed, how do you then create a parkland? How do you create connections uh, to, to the river uh, area and helpfully uh, reduce flooding uh, within a municipality? So with that, I'll have Barbara come back up and give an uh, overview of the floodplain acquisition plan and then Jeremiah on his end about creating parks. Thank you. Thank you. This gives you a, a quick summary of the Bergen County program. Um, counties within the state of New Jersey are really starting to recognize that um, floodplain planning is important and that municipalities need financial support in order to purchase homes that have been repetitively damaged by storms and with their purchase represent not only the opportunity to create more flood storage capacity but also to create open space and public lands. So Bergen County has a financial program to help municipalities um, purchase those properties. And Adam can always give you the, the details on the finances of that. Hackensack's flood acquisition plan is part of this program. Bergen County, as Adam said, is providing the financial support so that you can create these plans um, tailored to your municipality. The Land Conservancy is based in Morris County. Um, the Land Conservancy has done this work in Morris County, in Middlesex County, and in Bergen County. In Morris County, the County Planning Department puts together the Municipal Flood Acquisition Plan. Um, in Bergen County, um, they've raised the bar. And what they've done is that they've allowed the city itself to plan for its own um, flood mitigation. So this plan has been tailored to Hackensack. We've done it in conjunction with your planning and engineering experts. And it's a very brief document that doesn't really have any surprises, but does allow access to the county funds. It also has inside the inf in the document um, information about repetitive loss and severe repetitive loss. That is confidential information. The maps and the data that I'm going to present tonight do not include that, so it can be presented to the public. So the flood acquisition um, plan documents, documents the local impacts from flooding events. So this is the base map for the city of Hackensack. You can see the river forming um, the boundary. The um, items in green are your municipal parks. In pink and in purple are public um, and charitable properties, school properties. Um, the red is the border of the municipality. Um, in the inset map, it shows the location of the city within Bergen County, and then the green circles are the flood um, gauging stations that we use in order to get the data to develop the flood acquisition plan. The plan gives a very brief picture on the population data, information on past flooding events, the impacts of those floods, what the federal standards are, and if the city has any current buyouts. What is interesting is at the last meeting we had with your experts, um, your manager brought up a really good question as to whether or not in Hackensack it's solely flooding or solely drainage issues or a combination of both. I'm not an engineer, I'm a planner, but I think it's a really good question and one that your engineers are aware of. So Hackensack's located within the Saddle River and Hackensack River watersheds. It's really primarily in the Hackensack River watershed. 
The Saddle River watershed is the beige color watershed on the lower left that is below Route 17, a really small portion of the municipality. Uh, the Hackensack River, as you know, is tidal, which influences the flooding events within the municipality. Your city is four square miles, and it has just under 45,000 individuals in about 19,000 um, housing units, according to the most um, recent census estimate. The municipality is bounded by Colesbrook, Vanson Millbrook, the Hackensack River, Risers Ditch, and Berries Creek. Colesbrook and Vanson Millbrook do represent some of the um, most serious impacts from the flooding within the municipality, um, and you can see those identified on this map. Some of your most um, severe damage was really during Hurricane Irene. The photographs that we have here are ones that your um, Office of Environmental Management and your Department of Public Works took. Um, and they're really focused on the Jefferson um, Johnson Avenue areas um, and you can see the extent of the damage. Um, you did have past storm events with respect to Hurricane Floyd, the Spring Nor'easter um, in 2007 and Hurricane Sandy in 2012. We went through with your Department of Public Works and your Office of Environment, um, Emergency Management those roads that have been subject to flooding during the recent storm and you do have um, quite a few streets that have been impacted and the impact can be road closures having to um, rescue individuals who are um, live in those areas or um, damage to manholes or city streets. So what we did then was look at where your um, most highly impacted areas were and identified um, areas that we identified as project areas for potential buyout and restoration I'm going to go through, this is what we recommend as in terms of a project area, and then I'm going to go through the other ones that we looked at and then um, are not recommending as highly. So this, um, this map shows the Johnson Avenue project area, and I have a couple more maps that really zoom in. Um, it's in the northern part of the city. Um, there are, had the highest concentration of properties that have suffered from repetitive loss. Overall in the city, you've had 63 properties receive federal funding um, through the FEMA program. 62 of those have had re um, repetitive loss. Only one has had severe repetitive loss. And this map shows the um, digital flood um, insurance rate mapping as of 2014. You have the 500-year storm, which is a 0.2% chance of flooding, 343 acres in Hackensack are within the 500-year storm, and that is the deep purple areas. And the 100-year storm expands from that, and it's an additional 683 acres, and it's the 1% chance of flooding. Here's the Johnson Avenue um, area. Uh, the next map will really zoom in. This is the aerial map that's included in the report. You can see in the, uh, the aerial map to the left, the small box um, that's in red is expanded um, to its right where you can see it's just below Route 4. And here's the intersection of Jefferson Street and Johnson Avenue in Hurricane Irene in 2011. So here's the project um, area shoot, show, used um, Bing Maps to show you where the project area is. It's bounded by Madison Street, Johnson Avenue, Jefferson Street, and Zabriskie Street along Kinder Kamak Road. This area has the highest concentration of um, flood impact. It also represents the highest opportunity for redevelopment for parks and open space. You have um, uh, some proposed plans for uh, developing the property across the street on Kinder Kamak. This would represent an opportunity um, to restore the property in phases to accommodate the floodwaters and also um, represent an opportunity for open space and public parks. And we consider it in a three-phased approach. So the first phase is the top area between Madison Street and the northern border of the municipality. Um, you do have one property there that does have loss. Um, and then the second phase would be that middle section between Madison and Jefferson. And the final phase would be that small triangle between Jefferson and Zabriskie. Um, these are the first to, fu to flood in the municipality due to the Vanson Mill Brook, and um, acquiring these would remove the most vulnerable properties um, 
from flooding within the municipality. The other sections that we looked at in terms of potential buyout for flood mitigation um, are the South River Street area right along the Hackensack River. You can see the inset map and then the map as it's located within the city. Um, the county program and the federal program are for residential properties. <clears throat> so this particular area really has a higher concentration of commercial and industrial that would not qualify for county funding. So for that reason, it doesn't rank quite as high. The same reason, the South Newman Street um, within the municipality on the other side of the tracks, north of Route 17, um, also has uh, experienced severe impacts from flooding, but there's very limited residential um, homes within that area. So again, it doesn't rank quite as high. Tracy Place along the western border of the municipality um, has a new development that um, it has been subject to loss, but it's, um, it's new. It's not something that we would recommend the municipality look to in terms of a buyout and um, doesn't really qualify for the county program. So again, this particular um, section of the municipality doesn't really rise up to the level of a flood mitigation um, opportunity. So with that, the plan itself provides the tools by which you can access funding um, if the city so chooses for flood mitigation and buyout. What Birkin County has done in their program, again, using the same terminology, they've raised the bar, they've recognized that buyout is only one step, that when you purchase a property, you need to be able to think forward as to how you're going to redevelop that property to maximize its ability to hold floodwaters and to provide the greatest opportunity for the public to enjoy and access that property. So they've retained the services of the Rutgers Cooperative Extension and Jeremiah Bergstrom to provide um, a good plan for that restoration. Jeremiah's group has done this throughout the state and they're really the experts on um, restoration. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeremiah. Thanks, Barbara. It's the last step in this process. Um, to really look at that area, that project area that I identified, and to come up with a vision of what that, <coughs> that place could be, that space could be, um, once uh, homes and properties are acquired and aggregated into uh, open space. And so we want to reclaim floodplain function as much as possible. We want that area to be able to flood so that it doesn't damage properties uh, and people aren't put in harm's way. And we want to maximize the potential for that to, to hold stormwater, infiltrate that stormwater and then as much as possible connected to other open space areas created as a, as a resource for recreation uh, as well as another open space amenity in, in the community. And so we go through a process of once that, uh, that site in that area is identified to actually walk the site, look at the area, do an evaluation of all the resources. There's a lot of great information and data out there. Do this at a very high level and then go out there and you know, do some field verifications, take some photographs and begin to vision what this area could become in terms of another amenity, another piece of uh, the community's open space um, network. And so we will be doing um, a site assessment, just walking around, looking at uh, the, the community, the neighborhood, um, looking at evaluating opportunities, looking at other adjacent um, open space areas uh, and potential connections, uh, and then working with your other professionals and staff to make sure that we understand how this, this, this area fits into the larger fabric and matrix of the community. And so at the end of the day, what we come up with is a vision, kind of a, a poster, a diagram, uh, a conceptual plan of what this area could look like once these properties are, are acquired and become open space and actually become floodplain once again uh, and are serving the purpose that they originally intended in terms of storing floodwaters uh, and um, it, during those, and those major storm events. And so we will come up with a design uh, and, a, and a concept you know, scenario of what this area could look like, how it can connect to other resources. Uh, open space resources and recreational resources in the community and then we will provide that as a public document uh, a short report and, and a vision plan uh, that the community can then use to begin thinking about what the next steps could be once these properties uh, are acquired and, and things begin to move forward so again the target of that uh, that planning process is really to enhance the floodplain function of this area uh, restore it as much as possible um, provide open space and recreational benefits and then increase Wherever, however much we can, um, you know, stormwater management potential uh, within that within that area. So I think with that, 
uh, we're pretty well wrapped up. Hope we didn't take too much time. We'll be glad to answer any questions uh, if, if there are any. Um, and then uh, again, the process is for us to work through this, this plan, present a, a, a final draft to you uh, in the coming months or two, and by spring have, uh, have this in place. And then it's up to the community to then begin moving forward with, with actually reaching out to the county to begin you know, talking about negotiating and looking at potentially acquiring properties. Okay, we're good. Any questions from council members? I just have a, a one or two. Um, do we have any idea how many, this basically it looks like you're focusing mostly upon the Zabriskie Street area. Yeah. Um, about how many residents or homes would be looking to be taken with this? Well, no, there's, the, I mean, there's a, how many properties were in that area? The, the phase one has a limited amount of residential yeah. properties, right. you know, be, by, by Madison Street, which is why it's the initial, initial right. phase. Um, phase two between Madison and Jefferson does have some multi-unit housing. As I say, there's some condos yeah, so and yeah. mid-rises over there. Right, so that becomes... Townhouses. Right, it becomes more of a, a challenge in yeah. terms of so, what you want to be able to do there. And that's not something we've run into in any of the other communities we've been working with in right. the county, is that, that multi-unit you know, multi housing. Mm -hmm. um, condo issues but again this is you know the programs you know in the FEMA programs and the state Blue Acres program those all have to be uh, voluntary uh, acquisitions you right have to have individuals come and voluntarily um, purchase that. you said take it We're, well, that's I, what I, my I, next I question it, was you know yeah. what what is the process yeah for, so yeah you know, the process is domain that, or there's no eminent domain or condemnation no that's not right. what we're talking about and these programs don't support that they don't provide funding for okay. that this is all, all those programs and the program in the county uh, it supports uh, it is are for voluntary acquisitions mm -hmm. uh, and then this this program would support that again you know in thinking ahead you know there's going to be another flood it's not right. a matter of if, but when. Yeah. Uh, a lot of communities have, after a flood, we have a lot of people come and say, what are you going to do? How are you going to help? What, what, what can we do? And it's like, well, you know what? We have a plan. These areas, if you're in these areas, this is an area we want to focus on getting right. people out of harm's way. Here, we have a strategy. Let's reach out to those resources and see if we can begin to make mm -hmm. this happen. Before those people <clears throat> rebuild and forget right. and right. wait another five or 10 years. So this is a tool to begin to allow that to happen the next, you know, when when people begin to approach the community or the city, you, know, the, you and the council the here as, um, you know, we need some help or we need to figure out what we're going to do. Can I, can I make a question, Mayor? Yes, sir. Nobody looking to, like, uh, for instance, to try to dredge the Hackensack River to try to alleviate the problem that we got in town, like Hackensack, so Hackensack, Lee, the ferry, Monaki, okay. to make that river deeper. Right, so that's a very good recommendation, and it's part of a multi-pronged approach in terms to it addressing your flooding issues here. This is one small tool within your toolbox. The purpose of this document is to access funding from Bergen County that if the municipality so chooses to acquire property for buyout. That's the sole purpose of this particular report. And right now, we're not aware of anybody that's looking at the, a dredging plan for the Hackensack at this point in time. Yeah, there's, there is a plan out there, but it's it's way down the road. That's not going to happen in a lifetime, but uh, somebody should be looking to that because sometimes you really can walk from Hackensack to Tine. There's so much sediment in the, in the river that the water has no place to go. And if you're gonna get more constructions in the middle and all that area that are acting like a sponge, the water gonna come here. I think that gets to your city manager's point about what actually is causing the problem yeah. within the city. Oh, we, we, yeah, there's well, there's the river, the the riser ditch is a major issue. Yeah. Exactly. Um, a lot of that, you know, it was due to when Route 80 came through. Um, that's when a lot of the trouble started. Afterwards, the water will come out up, but it won't recede. So it kind of gets trapped up here. We're looking at that by Newman Street. With, uh, with the engineer and public yeah. works about that because that, there's some other other things that hydraulically that might be connected with the riser ditch kind of separately from that. But there's yeah, no I think real residential properties in that area that really would fall within the kind of this large. If you look property. back, that area never flooded, you know, pre-Route 80 like yeah. it does now. Right. So it's, and it's gotten progressively increasingly worse. And uh, that's, that's a big problem for our, our industrial area down there. It's not a lot of homes, but there's a lot of a lot of commercial properties. So, but thank you for the presentation. We appreciate it. Sure. We look forward to moving forward. Yep.
Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. I get you something to drink. You want more water? No, sir. I got that. Ready, Ted? Yes, sir. Number three. Number three is a presentation from Brightview Engineering, John Jar, about the bus stop ordinance and the State Street two-way conversion update. Mr. Jar. Okay, the goal is quick. Mayor and Council, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for having me in your time this evening. Uh, my name is John Jar, I'm the president of Brightview Engineering. I'm here this evening to give you a brief presentation on the bus stop relocations that are necessitated because of the two-way conversion of State Street and Main Street. Uh, over the last few months, I've worked with New Jersey Transit and other city officials on establishing uh, some of the changes that are gonna have to take place due to the um, one-way conversion on Main Street primarily. As you know, one of the primary objectives of the two-way conversion on Main Street is we're gonna take the buses off of Main Street and move them to other locations. Mm -hmm. In total, we're going to have 18 new bus stop locations. Um, you already have in your packet this in black and white. I'm gonna send it around just for, just for a quick peek <laughs> if you wanna see what the color rendition looks like. Um, I'm gonna ask for a little help, and uh, this is the first round. And I'm just going to give you guys a very brief, one, this is, I'm going to give you one bus stop location, okay? Uh, in total, there are 59 affected bus stops, 18 new bus stops, 11 removed bus stops, and 30 existing bus stop locations, which, albeit we're not changing those locations, there will be routing changes that will affect them. So we embarked on a process with New Jersey Transit where New Jersey Transit recommended, oh, uh, you got to break the package up, everybody gets one of those. Yeah. You got everybody one? Okay, mm -hmm. so the, what you have, this, the small one you have in front of you is, was New Jersey Transit came to us and said, okay, this is where we think the bus stop should go. Then I went and met with them in the field. We reviewed them. This is the next round, so everybody gets one of these too. All right, we reviewed them with them, and we made some minor adjustments. Sometimes um, what New Jersey Transit saw as the best location for a bus stop was mainly geared towards their concerns for safety, how things work for drivers. Um, sometimes we needed to work with them to get the bus stop to be in a location that was more context sensitive and more of middle of the line so that would serve not just the needs of New Jersey Transit, but also the needs of our, our public and our bus riders. Um, concluding all of the, um, in total, 29 locations that had that little uh, piece of paper prepared for you know each one of those review individual relocations we then worked with New Jersey Transit safety officer and he reviewed all the 29 locations that would be the 11 removals and the 18 new state no locations and we have a safety report from New Jersey Transit saying that you know the final locations that we chose are now acceptable to them and provide the necessary safety some of the concerns transit had were you know, when the bus makes a turn, is there enough room for them to come out? What, do they, are they able now to basically make a turn, a left or a right? Can they navigate up to the curb? Can they get where they need to go safely? Can the riders get on and off safely? Is a location the right location? Sometimes just moving things a little bit closer to uh, an establishment like a convenience store 
where our bus riders are constantly at, and this way, you know, it, it just brings that context sensitive. We made this so that this was as user friendly as possible. We are definitely going to cause some minor inconvenience. Um, so we tried our best, another round of everybody gets one. So we tried our best to, um, uh, you know, go through each step and each station with transit so that it made sense. And that when we get done with this, somebody doesn't say, well, geez, if it was just 20 feet this way, it'd be right in front of the convenience store that I get my coffee at, that would be great. And we were able to do some of those things. Um, it, it just, you know, it's just context sensitive. It's just doing the right thing for the public. Um, the handout you just got now is now is a sample of the sign that's gonna be placed at each bus location that's gonna be removed. New Jersey Transit uh, di didn't have the text yet for me for what's gonna go in the bus stops that are staying or having modifications. So um, they're still in the process of getting things together. We've been working with them. It's a large undertaking on their behalf. Uh, last, this is the last round of handouts, all right? It's a rather large undertaking on New Jersey Transit's behalf. This is one of the larger bus stop relocations Transit has done as well. So um, I, I would say that, um, here we go, and, and the end is here. Uh, the last document which you have now is the proposed schedule. Um, actually, I need, I need one of those so I can just, just kind of roll through it real quick. Okay, so um, January 9th is this evening. Uh, before you, you have the ordinance that I uh, prepared with our, our uh, city attorney, <clears throat> and uh, that is the first step. After council find, it, hopefully the council finds that acceptable and votes favorably on it this evening, it'll be the first reading. It will have to be read again at our next meeting on January 22nd, after which it'll be passed into our ordinance. At that point, I can take the ordinance and forward it over to Bergen County. Uh, they already have a process established where they will now also do the same thing uh, and move forward with it on their, uh, with, with their process as well. And then um, you'll see we have tried to put together a schedule bringing us to April the 20th, all right? And, and essentially what we're saying is the, the first day that buses are going to establish their new routes and all the new bus stops will be in place will be April the 7th. The goal here was that we would take the two-way conversion of State Street and Main Street and make this a step process so that it's convenient for everyone and gets the job done efficiently. So our first step, as you know, we completed was the State Street two-way conversion. The next step would be to get the buses off of Main Street so that when our contractor comes out to build Main Street in the spring, the buses will already be moved to their new routes. We will have reduced some of the traffic. And we'll also have made it a little bit easier for the riders and for the business owners on Main Street so that we're not going to be faced with both buses and construction vehicles on Main Street during the summer months. Um, that concludes my presentation. That's Thanks. everything we have. And I'd like to offer uh, any questions or comments or concerns you may have. Questions? John, do you remember, because I don't have the number in front of me, how many people ride buses? the city uh, that we transport daily. It was unbelievable. It's unbelievably high. I yes. can't believe how, how high you know, that our bus stops. So yeah, I you, can't remember that number. Prospect high. Avenue alone has. You're not supposed to ask me questions I don't know the answer to. It's a really, all right, yeah. Hackensack is blessed with extraordinarily good ridership. New Jersey Transit uh -huh. is, is overwhelmingly happy with us. Um, and again, they're happy with us because we're partner with them. Mm -hmm. So we partner with them on making the bus stops convenient. Uh, we have very, very high ridership. I'll be happy to get back to you with that number, but it was very high. I, I just didn't write it, but I remember I just couldn't believe how high that number was. Yeah. But we service a significant population. Um, I also want to point out that all the signs are going to be bilingual. Um, we're going to have them both in Spanish and in English at every bus stop. Mm -hmm. And there'll also be signs placed in every bus on every bus route. Um, you'll notice that in the schedule we've tried to accommodate as best we can um, some advance notice for everyone. Um, New Jersey Transit will go out. They're going to have some greeters. We've discussed with them the high priority bus stops. Obviously the bus state depot is going to be a, a main location. They're going to put what they call greeters and they'll have somebody out there for, for the, you know, for initially um, either the day of or a little before to let people, you know, know, hey, this is going to happen and hand out some flyers and, and get some, you know, some public knowledge of this, as well as there's a public campaign that's going to take place both in the news and by the city. All right. Two-way? 
Uh, okay. Um, well, two-way State Street update is, um, as you know, we've converted, and it is now a two-way street. Um, we've been very lucky in that we've had um, very few incidents. Uh, so I would say that uh, considering that it's been a one-way street for over 30 years, um, we're very lucky to enjoy uh, some, some good paying attention drivers and an excellent police department who's helped us to really get through this. Um, we've run into a few unexpected uh, consequences and, and we're currently in the process of adding some striping and some more signs to kind of alleviate some of those challenges that we came up with that were unexpected during the design process. Um, the next, obviously the next step is going to be the bus stops and then the last step is going to be the main street. Okay. Any questions on State Street? Uh, I did notice, I don't know, maybe they were taking care of it. I think I mentioned them in 10, but so, oh, some of the side streets coming into from probably from the uh, east end. Uh, let's take uh, Bergen, for instance. There'd be a sign there if you're going towards State Street, uh, left turn only, mm -hmm. when it no longer right. is true. So I don't know if, whether we've taken them down or not. Yeah, there, there were a number of signs that were taken down over the last actually prior to this week. Mm -hmm. All right, so in the week between when school was out, we went out, we walked through with everyone, we took okay. the number of signs. There are still a number of unusual signs that need attending to. For example, right. the no left turn from Essex onto State Street. Uh, that sign will be removed tomorrow. Um, we're gonna add right. some new signs. That was uh, one of the ones I actually mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're gonna add some new signs over at Salem to help folks understand that if you're in the right lane, you have to go right. If you're left lane, you have to go left. Because Salem, you know, used to be two left turn lanes, and folks are having a hard time, you know, get reacclimating to that that approach. The other thing I noticed in, in Bergen was, or Sussex or Bergen were one of those streets. Bergen was one of those streets. <clears throat> we may have to lose a spot to the north, possibly, because it's very hard to see, or and, and possibly to the south. Yeah. Just so you for the turn rate issue, so you can you have a line of sight because right now with the the parking spot so close to the corner of the intersection, it makes it hard to, to see what's coming. So, I don't know, that's something down the road we'll probably have to address. Well, also at Atlantic, you know, Mayor, um, not just there, but also at Atlantic, we have a similar situation mm -hmm. where we have sight distance and a, 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 a transitional issue as well. Right. Um, a bill, our uh, parking manager and I have been addressing the situation. We're trying to find a way to keep as many spaces as we can. Obviously, parking is a you know, premium here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to definitely make some adjustments. What's been holding us up, sadly, is the weather turned. Yeah. We, were, we were ready to go, and the weather turned, and we weren't able to get out and make the striping changes we need to make. My other question, too, is I guess the parking meters have to be, a lot of them have to be readjusted, I guess. Yes. They're, they're, we're on that. We had a meeting already. Yeah, because some of them are like in the right middle now. of the spot, or there'll be two in the middle of one, you know. Right. It's... And some there's no none at all. So yeah, we were doing great, and yeah. then Mother Nature took over. If if I had yep. just another week, almost I would say almost every we had we have so many things on the list. I, I, I'm sure you saw my report. There are 14 items in there that need to be addressed. Uh, if we had good weather, I would have them all done. Right. right. So I just need a few good days. We will try. We're going to try and do some of the striping in the middle of winter. We're not going to wait. Right. Um, as soon as we get a little bit of a clear spot and hopefully a little rain to wash the salt off the road, mm -hmm. we're going to first put regular paint down and then we can put thermoplastic over thermoplastic that later. Over All right, good. All right, very good. Thank you, John. Excellent. Any yeah, further questions? Any other questions from anybody? Okay, and everything's okay at the ordinance? Any questions on the ordinance? Or I think it's, we're pretty it's good. It's rather lengthy. I think we're pretty good. And it, as you mentioned, spring is the uh, early spring for the uh, start of Main Street. Yes, I guess. I guess the other thing is is uh, hopefully we're going to uh, move up the timetable a little bit on Beach and Prospect. That might be helpful to know. It looks like the signal equipment will be in a little sooner. Oh, and hopefully, I'm instead of being the end of March, <clears throat> hopefully we'll get that in a little bit earlier, maybe the beginning of March. The traffic light. Yes. That's great yeah. news. Yes, great. we need that light desperately. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. And I have mm -hmm. to say it was very exciting to be able to drive two ways on State Street. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait for Main Street. Main Street's going to be very exciting for those people who used to drive on it when they were younger, I'm right? I'm one of them. I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them, too. What do, you, what do you try to say when they were younger? Ah! Oh. <laughs> Come on, Leo. You remember it, too. Come on. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time. You as well. Thank you. Okay, um, number four. Four. Number four. Proclamations. Yes. Number four is a proclamation um, 
from the office of the mayor of the city of Hackensack um, for all the children in the city of Hackensack that, uh, that's basically um, highlighting the highest quality of education possible, that it's effective education that plays in preparing all students for the city um, to be successful in their adult paths. So I think that this is um, bringing um, the suggestion of um, reemphasizing our commitment to education, educational um, is a variety. It's a high quality teaching professionals. We're basically just trying to get the word out and they're looking for the support. So I recommend this um, proclamation if the mayor and council who chose to um, support this document. Yes, sir. Um, number Brown five board. is the Radon Action Month. This is another proclamation to raise awareness of the condition of radon and the elevated radon levels that may be found in homes that pose a serious health threat to families residing in these homes if this, not, if mm -hmm. this is not addressed. Have we have we applied for grant money for these test kits, or, or are we going to? Or I know the county used to issue. Them. I know that the county did, but well, I so like if folks in town wanted to get a radon test kit for their home, I mean I don't know. Do we have any available now, or uh, I guess we need to follow up on that and make that announcement. Yep, I will put this down. Yeah, and I will get you I an answer, and I'll speak to, to Pen Pete Tenke. I don't know if the county supplies them, but I will find the county answer. County used to, I, 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 or else there was grant money that you could apply right. for to get them. Um, when we know, you know, we should just obviously make a public announcement so folks know that yep. they can do that. Okay, right. thanks. Number six. Number six is the um, Carver Park Grant. This is a grant that um, we were awarded which basically supplies $42,000 towards the rebuilding and rehab of our tennis courts at Carver Park. Um, obviously, I wish I could rebuild tennis courts at Carver Park for $42,000, but it's a good start. So that's what this uh, grant award would be funding for that project because our tennis courts at Carver Park are clearly in need of rehab or rebuilding or replacement. Um, number seven is a discussion on the Shade Tree Commission liaison. Because of the retirement of Tony Sedita, um, the city currently does not have an employee that works with the Shade Tree Commission for a liaison, and so I come to you, Mayor and Council, for some direction or recommendations or suggestions of somebody to um, replace Tony, which candidly I think will be hard. Have to be somebody from DPW. I don't know that if that's a requirement. So. I think it has to, but I think it, it would be good it because, it because there should be a what coordination. About Kati, Kati Salmon? <laughs> I think we need a city employee that will help, help coordinate the purchase and the planting, et cetera, of the trees. Well, so I, I think you have to ask you know, the DPW management to uh, make a recommendation Brent to someone. Fred, Fred, Fred would be good in his spare time. <laughs> okay. Um, I will speak to Fred if Fred is in agreement, is there support from the mayor and council to mm -hmm. make that mm -hmm. recommendation and approval? Absolutely. Okay. I will speak to him. Great. Number eight is a resolution for the revision of the Fashini Park Improvements Green Acres project that basically, um, I think we've been through this before, but I think we're through it again. Um, this um, supplies grant funding for Green Acres project uh, for the Fashini Park Improvements um, basically, it's the revision of the necessary because of the long term of the park of the park development project is 20 years, not 30. I think that that was an error, um, and that 600,000 in grant is for the city, which is 75% matching grant. 
So the 200,000 green acres loan is the city's reserve, or will serve as the city's match for this grant. And that's a 20 or 30 year. It's a 20, 20, year. 20 year. Originally, Originally it was discussed that, yeah. that it was 30 years and that was an error. It's mm -hmm. 20 years. Okay. That is number eight. Number nine is the M&M building revision. Uh, the original M&M design of the building um, had bathrooms basically um, stationed or positioned within the, the structure of the building. After further review and some changes to the design of the building, it was decided that the front lobby should be a lobby which would host a, re a, re uh, a reception desk, but more importantly, bathrooms. So someone could come into the front lobby of the M&M building when it's completed, and there would be double doors and a vestibule, so to speak, and then there would be bathrooms, male and female, in the front lobby without having people going in because we obviously have children in there and stuff. We don't want this complete access to the whole complex where people now are, are inserted within the building. So this way we can control basically choke points of how far people have access right. to the building, whether they're in or not, because obviously we have children there. We have a responsibility to make sure that they're safe at all times. I think also this was a recommendation of the, the planning seniors. board that for the senior center, they would have had to walk all the way through the building to the other side to access the bathroom. Right. That's my, so, you know, that, that was the was, next part of the sentence. Okay. Here. But um, obviously there is another component of it because the center basically is going to serve two of our population, children and seniors. Um, during that also part is it would force, it's just as the deputy mayor stated, because she obviously keeps an eye on all of this process that all of our seniors would have had to basically march three quarters through the whole building to use the restroom. So that was the other part of the change that we needed to make here. Um, number 10, unless there's questions, is the, and this would require basically a change order for this building. And you, we've identified the estimated cost, but I don't have the official number yet. I think we were still in negotiation with some of those numbers, yes. right? And we're back and forth. Okay. Uh, number 10, is um, basically to approve um, a consultant that the city of Hackensack, through the efforts of the Upper Main Alliance, are gonna partner with the city in, in identifying and developing basically a board for the Culture Arts Center, or what is referred to as the HPAC. So that consulting um, comes at a price. So what has been decided is the consultant who is the original uh, developer of the community theater in Morristown, which is highly successful in Morris County, which is located in Morristown, New Jersey, is going to be the retained consultant for the city. Half that fee, which is $3,200 a month, will be split. So the city of Hackensack will pay $1,600 per month for this service, only for six months to get this structure and organization in place. And the Upper Main Alliance, has agreed to assist us and they're gonna pick up the other half of it. So this would be the approval of the mayor and council to award um, a consulting agreement. And I got two other quotes um, for this position for the HPAC. And this would be for six months to establish the board, the structure, the organization so we can move forward. Could you just elaborate a little bit on the importance of why we need an executive board besides just having it or in place of or whatever we're going to do with the other board, the differences and, and why this one is so important? Well, I think that, that there's several components of the HPAC that has to be. There is the fundraising component of it. There's the establishment of basically the structure and the organization as a whole. And obviously... Um, almost like an endowment to make sure that the city progresses. So um, there were the original, uh, essentially, founding fathers of this process that we basically need to write our own Declaration of Independence, in a sense, so there is a structure, there is a body. Mm -hmm. So once the rules are established, these boards and these, whether these people are going to be um, part of the endowment or they're gonna be part of the fundraising, 
or they're going to be part of the operational scheduling pieces of this. The city, in a sense, has basically funded, developed, and built, well, not built, but redeveloped a piece of property for the culture arts fund. But without this, selfishly, the city manager would have to become involved in every little piece of this. I, As I, we've learned. <laughs> and, and no disrespect against the mayor and council or the board, but um, even I have my limits, and I also don't have any skill set in this. So it has really been recommended and is supported by the Upper Main Alliance and their, their, their commitment to the HPAC and to the city and to the mayor and council who, who have spent the time and the money to develop this basically as a component for the city and an attraction and an, and an enhancement um, to create this board, to, to establish it right. Um, uh, Albert Dibb is working on right now on hiring somebody to establish our COA thing. The thing that I try to bring to the city is the development and structure of all these things because as all these things become developed, you have to manage this besides just expectations, the function of it. So um, I support this 100%. I hope that the council will, in six months, we hope to have a complete structure. Um, I'm committed, and I know this mayor and council are, of starting this out on the right foot and doing it right. Unfortunately, we had a little setback the other night. Oof. We had a pipe freeze, and it burst, and it leaked water, and we had Service Pro in, and yesterday just wasn't one of my banner days here. But um, the DPW, the fire department, our construction department, um, our project manager, all these people came out, showed up put in, made sure that this got fixed. Um, it's not the fantastic situation. We had to cancel two sold out events that were supposed to happen that night and, and tonight. But, uh, you know, the city of Hackensack is resilient and we will soldier through. Sometimes it doesn't turn out to be too pretty, but I think we're getting there. So if the mayor and council approve this, we will bring in uh, Mr. Smith and we will get this finished and get going. And if I may, just for the for the public's information, this is like we've done with so many other things. It's you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. We you know, took other people's advice and saw what other towns were doing who had similar facilities, and said, "How do you fund these things? And how do you get a board together?" And and we move forward with that. And that's why this process is taking place. But the goal here is to make it as self-sustaining as possible down the road, which will be part of this board's job. Right. So it's important. And, and also to have it well used. You know, Absolutely. to look into varying different, you know, daytime uses and other uses and, of, of the facility as well. And to our cultural arts department and the and the Main Street Alliance, I mean and others. There's there's a lot of events booked here. Yes. I mean this place is busy already. So it's gonna it's gonna do well. Okay. And the and the last thing I have tonight, the mayor and council have board appointments. Now, the thought process was that the people that are on the board um, that still are going to be reappointed that are city members. But obviously, we have board members that come and go. So Councilman Battaglia, Deputy Mayor Sims, myself, interviewed a whole bunch of nice people that really took the time to fill out the forms and wanted to become part of the city's operation and commitment to, you know, volunteering, which volunteers in a, in a, in a city or a community that, that don't exist is a devalued because that's an a, a untapped commodity and a low-cost budget that really bring, and they bring so much exposure, and we had some fantastic people that applied. So tonight, I only supply to the mayor and council a list of the, that I think are acceptable candidates um, for these positions, they they show a real interest in this. Obviously, the mayor and council need to take these recommendations and look them over. And maybe there's something that I missed. They haven't been completely vetted because there's a couple little things I got to check. But for the most part, um, I thought that they really brought some, and most of them were very young, and they all seemed to be very interested in making Hackensack um, great, better. Not that it's not now, but the, they really are looking into the future, which um, for me, I was really impressed. I mean, there were some people there that were in their 20s that want to get on these boards 
and become part of something bigger. And, and I applaud their interest and their uh, commitment to the city of Hackensack. Okay. And if that all works, that would complete the city manager's report for the cow, except for Jim Maggot. A little financial weather report here. So uh, things are warming up, and hopefully our money is also so. Okay, Jim. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm here tonight is because there's two items that are on the agenda tonight that deal with the Main Street, the Main Street streetscape project. Say that fast, five times. Yeah, I know, and I, and I rehearsed. Um, and what I wanted to do is just kind of give a, a financial update on on that project because it is fairly complicated. And this way, when you when you vote on these resolutions later on, uh, you'll you'll have some background. Um, the streetscape project for Main Street is broken up into two sections. Uh, there's the north section and then there's the south section. Now, beginning with the north, okay, the, uh, the north portion of the streetscape is broken up into four different components. Uh, the first component runs from Anderson Street to Ward Street, okay, and approximately the, the, the cost of this was about 240000 And for this, we got a 2015 uh, New Jersey Department of Transportation local aid grant of $159,200. Uh, this project was financed uh, ordinance number 12-2016, which we did, um, and is pretty much, the, the, this project is completed. In fact, on the bills list tonight, you'll see is the, uh, the final payment to JC Contracting. Okay. Now, sections two and three of the northern part uh, of, of this project uh, the grants were combined. Okay, we got a 2016 DOT grant of $170,861 and a 2017 grant of $179,629. So total grants for sections two and three are $350,490. Uh, we're gonna need a bond ordinance uh, for that, okay, and because we don't know the approximate amount of the uh, cost of the project yet. Um, and to comply with the grants, this project needs to be out to bid by April 18th. Okay, so on the agenda tonight, you'll see uh, resolution number 14-2018. We'll be awarding, a, we're recommending awarding of a contract to Boswell Engineering uh, for the design portion of this project. Uh, the contract's for 15000 And the funding of it will come from a, a reserve for preliminary expenses Main Street Streetscape North, which we established back in 2017. Okay. The final section of the, the northern part, uh, section four, uh, will run from Passaic Street to Berry Street. Uh, this one we've applied for a DOT grant of $356,500. We, we, we haven't gotten word yet on it, but uh, that funding will come later on. Now on the south side of the Main Street project, Main Street South, uh, the streetscape project, this runs from Sussex Street to Mercer Street. And for this project, we got a New Jersey Department of Transportation Transportation Alternatives Grant of a million dollars. Uh, for this, this one also requires a bond ordinance. And like sections two and three of the, uh, of the north, we don't know what that dollar amount is yet, okay? So on the agenda for tonight, resolution number 15-18, we're gonna be establishing a reserve for preliminary expenses for the Main Street South project mm -hmm. for $140,000. Uh, what we're contemplating is then at our future meeting, probably the next meeting, we'll be awarding a contract to Boswell Engineering for the design of that uh, contract as well. It's important to, realize, uh, to understand also that uh, Boswell is doing the design only. Okay, uh, they won't be involved in the construction inspections, things like that. Um, so tonight we'll be awarding the contract to Boswell for the design of the North Project, sections two and three, 15,000. And we want to establish a 2018 reserve for preliminary expenses of 140,000 so that we'll be able to award a contract to Boswell at a future meeting. So then we'll be able to come up with the bond ordinance that we're going to need for the entire streetscape project or for what's left of it. Uh, and it's just important to understand that when we do a reserve for preliminary expenses, uh, that then becomes part of the bond ordinance. Okay, so in this case, 140,000 uh, combined with the 30,000, which we did for the North project, when we finally do do the bond ordinance, the bond ordinance will absorb 
uh, those two reserves. Okay. Um, anybody has any questions, uh, anything like that? Like I said, well, it's complicated. Uh, two questions. One, just for the public and the folks that are watching, could you just describe briefly what is a streetscape what is a street project, scape? or Albert's here, if not, is someone just give everyone an overview of the kinds of things that are included in what we call a streetscape street. project. Yeah. And then uh, my, se my second question you maybe want to answer first is, are any or all of these matching grants, or we are, are, are a portion of it just on top of this? No, DOT grants generally are grants. grants. Yeah, there, there's no match. Okay, uh, so that we're not required to match these amounts, and you say no. amounts to be determined. Right? So, Jim, do you, just for the record, I'm going to pick up on what she said. How much money have we gotten uh, DOT grants that have funded this project? I think that that public really should be identified yeah. that number. That would be... One million, roughly about one million five hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars okay. for the streetscape project. So the city of Hackensack did not have to reach in its pocket for a million five for the improvements of our streets. Uh, for the improvements of Main Street, yes, right. Main Street. Okay. Right. And we're still awaiting award on another three. Yeah, we're we're yes. still another waiting for fifty thousand. And we've been very successful with the local aid grants, you know. So so we're hopeful. That's why, if you notice, we we, we keep ratcheting up the amount that we're asking for. That's been successful. Uh, are we going to get 356000 for Section 4? Uh, well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. But to answer your question about what a streetscape is, um, it, it, it's a number of things. Mainly it's the, uh, it's the curb and sidewalks. Um, it'll be big, uh, brick pavers. Um, a lot of times there's new trees, tree grates, uh, decorative lighting, uh, street furniture such as benches, things like that. And because it's Main Street, it's important to understand that anywhere anywhere on the entire uh, uh, streetscape project that's going to uh, be in front of a project that's been approved for development, the developer will be Patient absorbing the cost of exactly. the streetscape, okay? Uh, we're only gonna be doing the cost for- For instance, 150, 170 is, is three quarters of a city block from Mercer going right. towards Sussex. Right. And right. that project would pick up all the new sidewalks, all the new streetscapes, the yes. tree grades, the trees. Yes. And, they, and they have to follow our design. Right. Um, There's it, design standards right in the rehab exactly. plan that they have to follow. I just think it's important, again, so the public knows what we're talking about, yeah. that this, mm -hmm. these are the types of things that we're providing and that we're doing it for the areas that are not currently under development so that right. we have a uniform appearance when, with Main Street. I think that's right. Important. Because you don't want to go through the conversion process and make it a two-way street. Uh, and then have to go back out and disrupt the street by doing the, 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 the sidewalks, the curbs, right. and everything else. Now, how would it work as a question? It's a tough question to answer because, you know, Mercer, the 150, 170 project certainly won't be done before the two way conversion. So, how does that work as far as, for instance, they're going to have eight, that project is called to have 18 foot sidewalks, set, uh, setback sidewalks of 18 feet from the curb. Um, that would still be done at the time of the construction, not ahead of time, correct? I would assume, as part of streetscaping. Robert, you gotta jump in here for a second. Yeah. I'm just wondering if that's something that would get done ahead of time. Well, how we then, coordinate the whole thing. I don't know how they could, even if you did it, I wouldn't want to see the construction mess it up. But if it could be done, it might be worth it to have the that, reimbursement right, from the developer. And, and um, the, the timing ha has to be right. And in, in, in many, in, in all instances, wherever there was construction that was approved, there was a bond posted. So um, nothing is released until the, the, the work is done in accordance with the, with the site plan approval. Um, I've had a, a conversation with John Jar, who's here now, and with, with, with Fran Reiner. And without a crystal ball, we don't know exactly when right. to, to, uh, 150, 170, for example, will, will come online. So it's part of the process, and it's something that we're paying very close attention to. but. It has to happen somewhat seamlessly, and it can't happen wastefully. And there's a logical order of operations that we, we are sort of establishing based on facts on the ground. Well, wouldn't it make sense to do the bare minimum in front of that property for the time being and move those funds somewhere down the road and then... Have it be then, continuous. And then let him take care of his own business. Yeah, have it kind yeah. of be con you want it to be somewhat continuous. Right. I, 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 and now a word from John Jar. But wait, before you leave, Albert, are they, were they, did we hear piles today when we were pile driving going They were doing it like they're, a generation. And it, 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 
it turns out that they're driving piles when the when the when the, at least the top three feet of the ground is frozen, but they're but they're determined. Well, I know their goal was to be done in January. Do you know how close they are? Well, I've not heard otherwise yet, and I, I have a meeting scheduled with their on-site representative. Shortly after that, next week. that thing goes vertical. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why that's a that's a major thing we want to announce when they're finally done with those piles. We want to say hooray! Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks, Albert. <clears throat> I am back, John Jar. Um, first, about the piles. Um, I actually stopped over there the day before yesterday, and uh, um, it was making sure I asked them for their seismic readings to make sure that everything's okay. Well, um, my concern is our sewer lines. We have very, very old sewer lines on, on Main Street, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that you know, they're not exceeding the you know, allowable limits. So we're watching it carefully, and yes, it is going quickly, and once those piles are done, they are vertical. So we expect that soon. Um, I have been talking to Albert. I've been talking with our contractor. Um, I think the goal needs to be that um, if, if we can coordinate with those developers on their utility. The big concern is the utility connections. Every one of those buildings is going to need water, gas, and electric, which is all in Main Street. Um, so we're going to see if we can either leave sections out and come back later, or um, with a little luck, maybe we can leave sections out. I've been talking to Neglia. There may be the possibility that some of the resolutions for those site plan approvals may already include them having to repair or make those modifications. So we may be able to leave them out and not have to pay for them at all. I'm working on it. Um, I don't have solid answers right now as we're still in the process of figuring, you know, um, how we can navigate the waters because I don't, I do not want to do anything twice. So I would rather do exactly like you said, Mayor, leave it out and we'll come back later if we need to. Mm -hmm. So with regard Great. to the, you did touch on another important issue and that is with regard to the sidewalk and width of the road and curbs. All right. Uh, right now I'm working with the contractor that is uh, awarded the project. And we're looking into the possibility of maybe changing around a little bit of the contract um, and doing it a little differently than State Street. State Street had multiple, a piece here, a piece there, a sidewalk here, a sidewalk there, a curb here, a curb there. What we're looking at is possibly modifying the plan as Boswell is moving forward with the streetscape design for sections three and four. It may make a lot of sense for us to simply put new curb and just new curb the entire length of the road leave all the sidewalk out, leave that for the next part of the project, and just establish in the project we're working on right now, just the road and the curb. I'm sure you know that there are some challenges because in many cases on Main Street, the curb and road are flush with each other. Right. Our challenge is, is meeting the ADA requirements. In the State Street Main Street project, two, the two-way conversion project, that's when we're putting all the traffic lights in. All right, there are very, very strict ADA requirements that we have to meet in order to get the, um, the lights in and make that, you know, meet uh, the required grades and whatnot. We're trying, again, to come up with a streamlined process so that when we get out there, very different than State Street, we're not going to have 11, when I started on a project, we had 11 locations open under construction. They're only allowed by the contract documents to have three. I'm going to try and make it so that it's one block at a time. And we're going to get on and get going and go straight and be organized. Phase it right up the street. Mm -hmm. There you go. The thing is, is I will probably, I'm going to lay the groundwork now. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to put together a list of, of modifications I'd like to make to the contract. At some point, I would like to come back to you and ask you to consider adding money to the main state street conversion project so that we can accomplish this task and not have to go back and do things twice. I'm working on that now. Um, it's going to take me at least a few more weeks before I have numbers, but I hope that it will not be a significant change. You know, it's something in the order of less than 5%. Bearing in mind, less than 5% is a lot of money because it's a $5 million contract. Right. Okay? So, um, you know, this way I can kind of shoot the, 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 the volley over the a wire for you because you're already there. I think you already can see what I'm saying. And that is that it makes sense for just to get in there and get right. this thing clean. This so way, when they come back with the state street, the right, sidewalk from your project, mistakes on state we street. Because yeah, <laughs> now you're, you're speaking with all business people. You're talking about all business people here now, so we have to be very careful on how we disrupt their businesses. Mm -hmm. Can't be all over the place. It has to be structured and scheduled, and they need to know what's going on. And yeah, it's we are not going to build Main Street the way we built State Street. Thank right. you. Okay, I can assure you that that well, so long as you keep me here until you throw me out. 
All right, uh, we're, we're going to have a little different approach, and I think. Oh, how you doing? You know, you should start you know, either north or south and just work your way from one right. end to the other. Yes, sir. One of the uh, other yeah. things that, that came up in a conversation when we had discussion with Boswell Engineering is that because the million dollars was set aside for the straight for the the streetscape, I'm doing the gym here three times fast, um, that by curbing the full length of Main Street that money could be put back in for the sidewalk thing. Because what I don't want to do, and I've already had this conversation with Boswell and said, you need to move on this project immediately, is that I don't want to do the, the, the conversion of, of Main Street and then go back in, tear it back out for the beautification. So I'm like, okay. So now oh, no, we need to blend those two projects basically seamlessly, put the curb in first and then go back and fix this because I don't want to spend this money twice for, I don't want to use the word nonsense, but it would be a, a very foolish move on the city's part to put it in and tear it back out to make this modification. So we've had discussion about this. We're, we're in discussion with Boswell. I've encouraged them to go at this with full force because I want to make sure because the contract's going to kick in for the conversion, I need to make those parallels make right. because right. someone's going to supply us with a million dollars. I want to make sure we get the net net value out of that that funding and, and essentially that gift to the city. Is there a way for the utilities to build like junction boxes ahead of time? In other words, bring it from the center, if wherever you have to bring it from, to a junction area so that it's staged and ready to go for the building? Simple answer, yes. Honest answer, not going to happen because the utility companies don't have any money and nobody wants, nobody wants to fund it until they know what they're doing. Right. It's, it's a challenge. Um, we're one of the things, thousands of new customers. You got it. But they're not going to put a penny forward. What I want to recommend, it might be part of this extra when I come to talk to you guys, is maybe we may want, it, it, they're not very expensive facilities. We're talking for each building probably in the area of less than $20,000 for making the necessary accommodations in the street before we do the street work to do it, and potentially maybe we could sell it back to them. So I brought I brought that you know to um, the attention of two of the utility companies, and they thought that was a brilliant idea. They loved it, but I don't want to spend any city money unless I know I'm getting it back. So I'm I'm trying to advance. You know I'm trying to look for solutions. These are challenging problems. Okay, I'm trying to look for solutions because I don't want to dig the work. Listen. Uh, you're going to have to pull me out of my grave if we dig this road up after I put it down. Okay, I, you know, I'm going to. This is my road now, and I'm going to protect it with my life. It's like State Street. Okay, not for nothing. Utility companies already went out there and put some yellow. I don't know if you noticed it. They had a little yellow paint out I there. Get nervous when they put the gas. Yeah, you want to see me go and run it? You want to see the, the engineer go running with his arms up, saying, "What do you think you're doing?" That was that. That took place, and that will take place for the next three years. We have on our ordinance a three-year moratorium. No one is allowed to dig that road up. Okay, if they do, they're going to repave that road from curb to curb to my requirements. And that's what the ordinance allows me to do. And we're going to stick with that, you know, for State Street. I'd like you guys to consider making it five years because that's the DOT policy. So a discussion for another day. All right. Thank you. Hopefully I answered your questions. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all, Council. Sorry for, for so much time. Anita, where did Mr. Sims go? Do you know where Dave went? Well, Dave, he'd be back. He went to take care of him. Okay. I need a motion to open to the public, please. Offer. Second. Second. <laughs> all, all in favor? I can't. I can't. I can't do it. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody from the public would like to speak? Please come forward. You have three minutes. Give your name and address to the clerk. Peter Marcus, Annie Davis Avenue. Uh, this is a type of meeting, I wish, you know, I've said it a couple of times before, it would have been nice to have some open discussion uh, and have it be a working session. I think this is a little bit, I don't want to say it's silly. I'm glad Mr. Jar is here because he just did an outstanding job on State Street. And what was really impress, impressive to me was how everything that was listed on the city website was adhered to impeccably. I mean, if people wanted good information on what was going on on State Street and how things were going to happen according to a set schedule, it was done very, very well. And, and you should be commended, commended for that. 
The uh, flood acquisition people have left. I guess they've taken their plane with them. Uh, I can see us buying, you know, uh, uh, apartment houses on Jefferson and converting them to uh, parks. To parks, but uh, they, the, the best intentions, the environmentalist. Got a big kick out of Jim being asked about how much money we've spent so far on streetscape, and he forgot to put in the 99 cents. You know, he's so so precise. I, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, Deputy Chief Annunziata, uh, not at the city council meeting down here. Was that just because of early in the evening, or it seems like uh, I think they asked it? to do it early. I because usually they're at eight o'clock. You mean why didn't we do it at eight? Yeah, but why not do it as part of the city council meeting? Well, one of the discussions was that because the you know the eight o'clock meeting seems to be pretty jam packed, that now that we've started the cow meetings earlier, that we have these. If you haven't noticed. We used to do these informally during the day, yeah, and I, the recommendation yeah. from the mayor was that these families, these are recorded, they should be public, we should be proud of the achievements of these officers, please fire DBW or employees for the city. So it was decided that from here this date forward, that all promotions or these type of activities would occur at a council meeting because they're recorded and the public would be here for, for their family to be present. Good. I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, certainly you don't want to do it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You if, know, it's, and, if it's at 8, by the time you get to it, it's probably 8.15, and there's young children. So I think the 6 o'clock was probably better for them. But uh, HPAC, we had, uh, I saw the events canceled. Serious issue. Was that uh, covered in construction? Uh, sprinkler, or? sprinkler line froze. It's, really? a, it's a dry, they call a dry system. Mm. Um, evidently, there was some water in the line somehow. Mm. Yet to be determined how that happened. We, um, um, they were supposed to call me today with the insurance adjuster. They didn't call. I'm sure they're going to call tomorrow, and we're going to try to sort this out. Mm -hmm. But there was some damage. It wasn't substantial, yeah. but there was some HVAC issues. It's too bad. They were too, too nice. Luckily, it was, to the, it was to the front of the building. It was to the front of the so building, so none of the new the, lighting or the stage or the or seating TV, was affected. None of that was affected. Just in the very front. The lobby areas. Yeah, there's a lot of things I like to talk about, obviously, the three-minute limit and all of that stuff, and Kathy's going to follow up with some things. But I do want to mention uh, the M&M building. I thought we would get more. Well, I, I can see now there's going to be some, some changes to the building as far as the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the change notice. But the situation with the entire area being blocked off now and chained off as a construction site, when it's obvious that I think, and I don't know, most of the construction is taking place in the existing building, which is really demolition, removing the HVAC, interior walls and things. Nothing's being done uh, as far as the addition is concerned and probably won't be done for perhaps a couple of months in terms of uh, bringing heavy equipment in and excavating. I don't know what the plans are, but it would seem to me that the existing, the old parking area, that the chain link fence could be truncated and that parking area could be opened up and it could be plowed especially because you can see in the last storm we had, and we had a couple of funerals down there, so I'm a little partial to it, uh, it was very, very difficult getting anybody in and out, and uh, Holt Street was basically closed because we had cars lined up there, and the, the sidewalks, you know, uh, basically, you know, uh, Lodi Street is so narrow that I would think that, that let's say on a weekend, those gates could be open, the, the lot would be clear, the church could use it. I know it's a public lot and not a church lot, but it seems like the construction site, as it's presently configured, is too big for the construction that's going on, and we're shooting ourselves in the foot when we can take advantage of some of that space. I will, I will defer smaller, to the city manager to contact the footprint. contractor and let, let them see what they can do down there. But Thanks for the extra. I think there might might have been a liability issue, but I, yeah, I understand. that's at the not, top of the list. As Trump said, you know, who knew two-way conversions could be so difficult, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're Thank you, sir. Good evening, Happy New Year. I don't know if this is the first meeting. Um, Kathleen Salva, Lodi Street, Hackensack. Three minutes is kind of uh, condensed here. Uh, congratulations to Captain Zanato. He's he's a great person. Worked with him for many years, and I'm happy that he got the position. Um, compliments to our um, engineer, John Jor. Truly a professional. Um, all the things that he's undertaken have worked out well. He's very. Um, it, it's, he's, he's good for an engineer because engineers usually don't don't think they just do things by, by the book, <laughs> and I, I commend him. And he's really really nice, really good to make work a with. Good sound bite. Uh, they don't talk and they don't think he's one of the best. He and he and John Flanagan are my two favorite engineers, but everybody else is like, don't even get me started with the other group. Um, 
the M&M building, if we were were to be televised when we had the nice volunteers that, that are participants of these boards, meaning the planning board, they recommended after hearing everybody in the audience that the mayor and council should listen to the people and, and do it, and that didn't happen. But one of the things that we said, and we really specifically um, enforced, is that we don't need a senior citizen there, senator there. And it's a lot of money, and now to even pay for revisions of that building, that's going to add more to this $8 million cost, which is ridiculous. We have a wonderful functioning senior citizen building, and the mayor said that we'd love to share services, and we have been sharing services with the county. It's only located a block away, and we told them that. We don't want a senior citizen building, uh, and we don't need bathrooms for them. Uh, and we're going to have problems with bathrooms. This infrastructure is the oldest in the city of Hackensack. You start flushing those bathrooms, we're going to start, you're going to have to do the whole infrastructure, the whole area because everything's gonna fall apart. We did that when they built the jail, we made the county do all the new sewer systems. You have in the capacity of 200 and more in all these bathrooms, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a disaster. So I hope you would rescind this consideration. Uh, forget about this, maybe we can give us some grass in the front because these people that were here before and they wanna give open space. I wish Mr., uh, what's his name? Sims was here because we're, we're completely covering 100% of that land to make to make this, this building, and it's really, really, really a shame. Um, nobody can fill uh, Tony Sedita's shoes. This uh, liaison between the, um, the city and the Trees Commission, he did that without any compensation, as he did, uh, he was here 24 seven. He was here every day, any time. I called him at one o'clock in the morning. He was there on Saturday, on Sunday, any kind of pipe that broke, and we can, we can never replace him. That is why I'm so upset with the article today in today's paper that the record did, and I wish our reporter should maybe write for the Inquiry music, uh, magazine, because it's fiction and, and it's slanderous, what he, what he put. Uh, it was not a federal offense. It was done in federal court. It was a civil, it was a civil thing. The money that he got was all money that was due to him because he didn't... Come, he came to work all the time. He could never take off because of, of all the snow problems and everything else. So um, I was very disappointed with that article in the record, and as, as were a lot of people who, who, who read it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to speak? Seeing none, motion to close to the public. All fair. <clears throat> Leo. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, need a motion to go into closed session. Offer. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack deem it necessary to discuss certain actions under section 7B7 and 7B8 of the Open Public Meeting Act, which pertains to matters falling with attorney client privilege, ongoing litigation, and personnel matters concerning the employment of a current or prospective public employee. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack is of the opinion that such circumstances may presently exist, and whereas the mayor and council wishes to discuss the following issues, personnel matters, ongoing litigation, matters involving attorney-client privilege, matters involving the purchase, lease, or acquisition of real property, any pending or anticipated litigation or contract negotiations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack deem it necessary to exclude, exclude the public from this discussion. The outcome of the discussion will be disclosed within 90 days or at such time as the interests of the city do not require confidentiality. Steve? Sure. Yeah. I don't really have a, I may have one worker's comp potentially, but that's it. So pretty quiet. Okay. Okay. See everybody at 8 o'clock. Thank you. Anybody have anything to say before we go back? Okay. There's a wherever the hell they are. Good evening, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome to uh, the meeting. Uh, I need a motion to uh, close, the close the executive session. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Constantino. Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Aye. And I, I just add for the record because we did discuss the workers' compensation matter involving an employee named Justin Donovan for the record. Okay. Okay. Then a meeting, uh, motion to close the council. Motion to close the council session. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Constantino. Aye. Mayor Sims. Is not here. Councilmember Battaglia. Aye. Mayor Lebrose. Aye.